Welcome back to another episode of Warren Cali. In this episode, I'm going to talk about actor Dedrick Gobert and his crazy story. Dedrick was born on November 25th, 1971 in Shreveport, Louisiana. He later moved to LA and grew up and was raised by his mother Carolyn, who later described her son as a friendly person who liked to joke with people and make them laugh. When John Singleton started the casting process for his debut film, Boys in the Hood, it was a story that was based on his own life and the people he knew growing up. He intended to star mostly local people in order to keep a sense of realism. The movie depicted the lives of three young African American men growing up in South Central LA. The film starred Ice Cube as Doughboy, Morris Chestnut as Ricky, and Cuban Goonie Jr. as Trey. John Singleton would meet Derek and the two would strike up a friendship. And when John Singleton had written a script for Boys in the Hood, he offered Derek a role as Dookie, who was a close friend and member of Doughboy's Ice Cube's gang. Dedrick's portrayal of Dookie is best remembered for his iconic pacifier, which his character used throughout the whole movie. It is said Dedrick had actually sucked on pacifiers in real life in an effort to quit from smoking. John Singleton thought it was a good thing to use in the movie, so it was in the film. His role in Boys in the Hood was the start of his acting career. The film would prove to be both a financial and critical success and was praised for his emotional acting and powerful writing. It was nominated for Best Director and Best Original Screenplay, making John Singleton the youngest person and the first African American to be nominated for Best Director. During the editing process for Boys in the Hood, John Singleton started writing Poetic Justice. This movie later starred Janet Jackson as Justice and Tupac as Lucky. The movie followed the story of them becoming acquaintances who didn't like each other and after a long trip set up by their friends they would build a relationship. Dedrick had another small role in this film, with John Singleton being known to put some of the same actors in his previous movies and his newer movies. Other Boys in the Hood actors were appearing in the film as well, like Lord Avery, who I did a previous episode about. Dedrick's small role was a friend of Tupac's, which both men would have a convo about Dedrick committing a crime and him driving away after talking to Tupac. With two acting roles under his belt, Dedrick would act in what would be his last role in John Singleton's film, Higher Learning. The movie follows the lives of a college student going through social and racial issues. Ice Cube will also appear in the film again, along with several other people from John's previous movies. Dedrick played the role of Fudge's homie, one of Ice Cube's friends, but he would never see the finished film, which was released in September of 1995, almost a year after his tragic death. Just six days before his 23rd birthday, Dedrick would be involved in an argument that would cost him his life. During the early morning hours of November 19th, 1994, Dedrick along with his girlfriend Jenny, his friends Ignacio, Christine, Herman, and a group of others attended a legal street race in Maraloma. During a race that Ignacio participated in, another vehicle pulled in front of him, which caused him to brake to avoid a collision. He then got out of his car and began arguing with the other driver, who was described as a Latino man. The two men then started fighting, which led to Ignacio getting jumped by a group of Latinos, but this ended with the police showing up. A few blocks away, at a pizza parlor, the two groups were running to each other, which led to the Latino group pulling out a strap, but decided just to leave and not do anything. Dedrick and his group would then decide to leave, which they would then run into several bloods, which was a group around 15 to 20, from a gang called ABC. They were sitting outside the pizza parlor. This situation would be bad. It was said that Dedrick was drunk, and he ended up bumping heads with the blood group, which he ended up wrapping a crip on him, which the bloods didn't respond good to. The blood members would start to jump Derek, which they said they did because he had a strap on him. This would lead to Jenny, Christine, and Nasio trying to jump in to stop the fight. They would all get jumped as well. Then Christine next would say all she heard was multiple shots being fired, and the shooter was said to be Sonny from ABC. Sonny was said to stood over Derek and Nasio after they got a bag beaten and shot them. Jenny tried to stop the shooting, which led to her getting shot in the neck, which left Jenny paralyzed. Both Nasio and Derek lost their lives. Derek took multiple shots to the head at the range of two feet away. After receiving several tips, Sonny was later arrested on December 12, 1994. Sonny alibi was that he was with his girlfriend that night, but a lot of his gang snitched on him, saying he was a shooter, killing that alibi. Jenny later testified at trial, describing her account and the pain she goes through, saying how Sonny ruined her life and several others, and how she couldn't even feel anything below her chest. Sonny would be sentenced to death on May 27, 1999 putting him on death row. After 23 years, Governor Newsom signed the bill, which got many inmates off death row, including Sonny. Dedrick was only 22 years old before his life was cut short, which it could have been a promising career. RIP to him. This will conclude this episode. 
If you haven't already, check out my previous episodes. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.